This holds true for a lot of things, but you can't always judge a book by its cover. Back in the day, eh, let's say 2014, I was still in the hobby. I hadn't really started this channel all that much, and I was still going to Dart Wars and kind of looking for a competitive option to solve my blowgun issue I was having. And there were a lot of blasters from Busby I purchased trying to find the mythical panther tank. The good size that you could put in anything that hits like a dump truck. I really wanted to find one of those. So I bought like the Air Max 6 and the Air Max 10 or 12 or whatever the heck the bigger one was. The Air Max 1. I bought a lot of those blasters and they all had the same air tank in them. They were all identical. Basically the size of a Hornet tank. Worked okay, but it wasn't what I was looking for at the time. And this blaster today, I swear I had seen it on the shelf. I, I'm almost positive I did at a Walmart, but I never picked it up because you just take one look at it and you're like, oh, it's 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 obviously like an oversized Tech 6. Why? Why would I? Fast forward to a couple of months ago, I was really looking for one of these things for the obvious reason that it was called the Vampire Hunter. This wasn't the first time I had looked for one. I was curious because I just never saw anything on it what it was and I found a listing on Amazon for like 40 bucks which is a bit more than I wanted to spend for this but the Vampire Hunter surprisingly enough is an air powered blaster it is the same as the Air Max 6 and whatnot in fact if you before you put the bow arms on you can look down there and you can see it's the same exact air tank but it's an air powered blaster called the Vampire Hunter for obvious reasons, I needed to have one of these, and I finally do have one thanks to Derek. His channel will be in a card and in the description box below. He does a bunch of nerf stuff. He's a new channel. He runs his own dart foam flinging arena building, you know, birthday party going to business. The dude has a very impressive collection on blasters. Really, really cool dude. And he, he posted a picture on Facebook where he found one of these sitting on a shelf at a Ross for like 13 bucks. And a lot of people had said they had never even seen one in the US. And if you do a little Google search in, on YouTube, you will see very, very little on this blaster. I did not find a whole lot. I think I found a grand total of two old reviews. I had to have it. I paid him for the blaster plus the $18 shipping, which wound up being like 35 bucks, which means I saved a total of $5. Not the best decision ever, but was the Vampire Hunter worth it in any regard? First and foremost, what exactly is it? It is an air-powered blaster with the pump being back here in the kind of stock-like area. You pump it once, you pull the trigger, it rotates the barrel, and it fires. And then this string right here, which just came undone off the little roller wheel, a little bit annoying. This is its whole gimmick functionality thing. It has these little bow arm crossbow things that when you pull the trigger it has like a little kit that when you pump this it pulls it back you push it back in you pull the trigger it releases it it's a cool little gimmick for like fun play stuff like that but obviously no purpose and these bow arms are not meant to come back out before i even put them in i kind of sand it off the edge there a little hook on it to make sure that they can come back out in case i didn't want them and these aren't gonna fall out right now unless I really shake the thing really hard, kind of like this. Not a big deal. It has six start rotating turret. That's okay, I'll accept that. And again, it is air powered, so it requires a pump every single time. But the interesting part about this blaster is that pull it back, push it forward, and if I let go, you'll notice it pops back out because the air tank is basically already full. Now I can pull this back again and pump it forward a little bit more but I'm hitting a lot of resistance, and I mean a lot, and if I shove it, well, you can hear, maybe not on camera, but you can hear the overpressure release kick in. Then you pull the trigger. Sounds pathetic. The best part is I ran this thing through the chronograph with a mix of elite darts and bowberries, and I hit an average of like 73 FPS. Even if that was the single pump, it's still basically maxed. Two pumps, you're gonna hit that distance or that velocity I just mentioned. That's really good. That is above elite standard by quite a significant margin. So this was not a slouch when it came out. 
again, 2014 blaster from Busby. 76 FPS for like two pumps. And that's really easy to work with on this thing. There's a lot of fun to be had there. It was a comparable blaster at the time, but of course, it's an air-powered blaster, so <laughs> you plug the pump, you're gonna get more power out of it. It's gonna be a little more unwieldy with this thing, you know, sticking out all the time, but you can do it. But you can also just not even keep the stock pump. You can replace the tank. Well, the stock pump you would wanna keep, and the reason for that is it is massive, very big, very good. Maybe not the best location. A lot of people like them up here, but the kind of small barrel on this thing, like the small profile up here, if you were to shoulder it and then you needed to reload, you don't have to worry about kind of this awkward angle. It just feels really natural. It works with this thing. You could keep yourself in the fight. Of course, if you are going to modify it, you are going to rebarrel it. You're going to get a much longer barrel, pet G, stuff like that then it's not gonna be as good, but then at the same time, if I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna add in rear loading, so it's gonna be better anyway. The point is, this blaster is really good in a couple of reasons that the Air Warriors line, like the Air Max line, wasn't. The pump is good, you can replace the tank with, say, a Panther, somebody had said you. The irony of that is still sinking in. <laughs> Replace it with a Panther tank and get a lot of performance out of it. That's on the table with this for sure. But when you compare like the grip, which is very comfortable and the trigger pull. Now this is important because when you pull this trigger a little bit, it's gonna click once, it's gonna rotate the turret. But then if you click a little bit more, it gives you a satisfying click, and that's when it releases the air and fires the dart. It works amazingly well. Very well, in fact. I was quite impressed when I had this blaster. Now, this is obviously not something that's very easy to procure nowadays. Again, the only place I could really find it was on Amazon from like two sellers and they wanted $40. And I'm not really gonna recommend unless you're somebody like me has a specific use for a blaster called the Vampire Hunter. I wouldn't recommend you go out and get it. And keeping with the Vampire Hunter theme, the box here does come with something a little goofy. And that is six steak, like wooden steak decorated Busby sticky darts even says so right here. And I feel like I've seen like some kind of, ex like a side kit for these things, but I can't find any of them anywhere. Maybe I can buy some more from Busby, I really hope so. The two, bl the three blasters they reveal on the back of the box here are the Blazooka, which is another very good blaster. Actually, one of the best, best blasters Busby has released in a long time since like the Sentinel or basically anything else they're coming out with now. And then the poopy version of the Predator and the poopy version of the Sidewinder. Sidewinder being a blaster I've always wanted to like, but it had just terrible performance. All in all, I'm not really saying you should go out and get one of these things, but if you have one or if you see one at a Ross or something like that, it's a pretty decent buy. Now, of course, I had a very specific use for this one which also means I can't really do too much in the way of cosmetic modifications because I want to keep the sticker and everything right there. But for a blaster that's reasonably comfortable, shoots well, has good modification potential because of it being an air blaster, I'm excited. Six shots is more than enough if I can get this thing hitting 220, 250 FPS, which is entirely possible. I mean, Panthers can hit 100 foot stock ranges flat. So there is a lot to love here. But again, I had a very specific use, so don't be surprised when you see this thing again in the very near future with a little bit more done to it. What do you think about the Busby Vampire Hunter? Do you like it? Do you want one? Any mod potential? Besides sticking a freaking Titan tank in it because that's all anybody ever says anymore. Let me know what you think down in the comment boxes below. And of course, if you like this kind of blaster, hit the like button. And if not, there's a dislike button there for you as well. But I'd love to hear in the comment section why you did not like it. Make sure you check out Derek's channel. Again, there will be a card and a link in the description. And that's pretty much it. 
I'm Walcom S7. Thank you very much for watching this video. And of course, I hope to see you in an entirely different one.